presenter this morning, and he's going to be doing a presentation on my best income trading strategy for 2020. Now, just a little bit of a backstory. It was Marcus that first introduced me to trading back in 2008. And uh, I had just left the corporate world and was semi-retired, wasn't quite sure what to do. And I decided that I wanted to pursue trading. And Marcus and his team at Rockwell Trading are the ones that introduced me to this fabulous world of trading. Now, we've been partners and good friends ever since. And also another little interesting thing, by some weird quirk of circumstance, we also happen to share the same birthday. Yep. Though I must confess, I was born a few years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> When's your birthday? I didn't know this story. How do I not know this? Yeah, story? we are both November fifteenth. Are you serious? That is yes. true. Oh, my and son and my brother are November seventeenth. So there what, you go. So it was meant to be. You know, the stars aligned when we came together. But he's been Marcus has been associated with Westmark Trading for a number of years, and he's the CEO and the founder of Rockwell Trading. He's a superb trading and investing expert who has taught over 300,000 people across the world how to use his simple and direct methods for understanding the markets and making money. And in today's presentation, he's going to share a powerful day trading strategy for all account sizes, how to harness leverage with fixed risk even during this insane volatility we're seeing today and how he's up about 45% in the first two and a half months since using this strategy. And with that, let's welcome Marcus Heidcutter to the summit. Marcus, great to have you here this morning. All right, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> let's just make sure the sound is okay. You can hear me just fine. Oh yeah, sounds good. Because great. there's nothing more share. annoying when the speaker is very soft spoken and you can barely hear them or super loud. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure since we're spending here an hour together. Uh, okay, fantastic. Good. I'm going to turn my share off, Marcus. Are you going to share PowerPoint or are you just going to talk? Uh, well, the way how my technology works is that actually uh, everything is coming through the camera. Let me just show you. So okay, what so I'm going to do. I can turn my... Here. I'll turn is, my deck uh, that you see, I will remain in this bottom. So I do believe in order to see me that you have to double click probably on my video that it blows up. It becomes really big. Uh, let's just see if everybody can. Yeah, do it. it looks great. Looks great. Okay, does this work? Okay. Uh, I, I think Zoom does it automatically when I speak. But if you double click on my little picture, then I'm coming to you. Full screen. Okay, so uh, we are we, we're going to get started here. I uh, want to present to you my favorite strategy, my bread and butter strategy. You see, every trader I believe needs to have a bread and butter strategy, and that's what I want to show you today. And uh, also, because you said it earlier regarding the giveaway, we have a few giveaways. Yes, uh, I'm giving away some of these mugs because I think they're really really cool. You see, they say trade what you see not what you think. Hey, I don't know about you, but this has saved my butt a lot of times because hey, when, when I trade what I, what I think, it doesn't go too well. Okay, so hope everybody is okay here with, uh, um, with the video, with the sound, and then let's just get started. So in the next probably 45 minutes, I wanna show you my favorite trading strategy, but really super important. I wanna keep it here very interactive. I mean, you know that you can type questions. I believe the way how it is set up that uh, us, the presenters, we can see your questions, but you can't see each other's questions for a very simple reason. It's usually very, very distracting. I want you to focus on me. Yes, I am that US kid because I got up early here for you. Anyhow, so let's talk about my favorite trading strategy and what I feel you need to know. So first of all, today's agenda, here's what we're gonna talk about. I wanna show you the three keys to trading success. And I believe that these three keys will bring everything that you've heard, that you learned over the past two days together, as well as what you're about to learn today. I want to then show you how to find the best stocks to trade. And uh, you see, when you want to trade options, obviously, you need to know what stock is about to go up, down, or sideways, because these are the only three directions the market can go. These are the only three directions the stock can go up down or sideways. So I will show you a very simple way how I determine what a stock is more likely to do next. Uh, I'll be happy to share my trading routine with you so that you know what I personally do. And then, hey, uh, you have been here before, so you know what happens. At the end, I have a very, very special offer for you. Um, now, let me ask you this, because 
if you want, you we can wait until the very end until you see what I got for you, or do you want to know it now? I mean, it's up to you. Uh, let me know in the chat. So if you want to know, learn it now, or if you talk about it later, you know what? We talk about it later. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Some say no, either way. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's let the cat, um, cat out of the bag. Here's the deal. I have written a book, and uh, the book is called The Power X Strategy, and that is exactly what I'm going to talk about. Now, I wanna give you the book for free. This is the deal. All I ask is that you cover shipping and handling. It's a hardcover book, 160 pages. Shipping and handling is $4.95, and that's it. Okay, now that we got this out of the way, you know that I'm not asking you for hundreds or thousands of dollars. I'm asking you to help me with shipping and handling, which is $4.95, and I'll be happy to send you the book. All right, so now let's talk about the three keys to trading success. Here's the deal. In my career as a trader, I've learned that everything that we do boils down to the following three things. As a trader, we need to know what stock or option to trade, that is number one. We then need to know when to enter, that is number two, and then we need to know when to exit, that is number three. Now, if you think about it, everything that you have heard, learned here over the past three days is all about this. These are the three main tasks as a trader. And now, as you can imagine, there's a lot of ways <clears throat> To, to go around this. I mean, you have seen people talking about chart patterns, about indicators, uh, I mean, about different types of analysis, right? And, and this is the point. But I feel that trading sometimes is made too complicated. I believe that trading can be simple. Now, I'm not saying that trading can be easy. Let me just come to you here for a minute on the dream. If trading were easy, everybody and his grandmother would be doing it. But you see, for me, in my brain, it is important that I keep it simple and that, that I keep it very structured. And this is why, for me, it helps me. Whenever I look at a new strategy, whenever I try to learn something or when I develop new strategies, I'm always thinking amongst these three categories, know what to trade, whether it's a stock option or maybe even a binary option, or it could be a Forex contract, a CFD, it doesn't really matter. So which one should you trade? Number two, when do you enter and when do you exit? Now, quick uh, distinguishing, how did we, what, what is the word for the subject for distinguish? I don't know, doesn't really matter. So <laughs> short, uh, short note here, when to exit, there are two ways to exit a trade, as you all know. You can either exit a trade with a profit or you can exit with a loss. Now for me personally, I would like to know before I even enter the trade, when I take profit and how I limit my loss. And this is what I wanna show you today. Does that sound good? So this is the plan for today that I show you exactly what I do. So let's get started. Let's talk about step number one, what to trade. Now, you see, when it comes to picking a stock or an option or a futures contract, it doesn't really matter. There's several ways how you can go about this. I mean, one is the hot stock tip. And uh, I mean, obviously you are more advanced, more sophisticated, but as you know, there's a whole bunch of people out there that are trading stocks based on what Kramer says on TV or what, what Warren, Warren Buffett says, or maybe even what their friends say, where they say, ooh, I've heard about this company. They're about to developing a, a vaccine for this nasty virus that is going on. And, and they're about to skyrocket, you, you know what I mean? So this is the hot stock tip, and usually this never works out great. I mean, have you ever received a, a hot stock tip like this from, from a friend or maybe you got it from TV? And if so, how did this work out? Usually by the time everybody's recommending it, the move is already gone. So this is where uh, there's a bunch of newsletters out there, there's the talking heads or the friends, right? So there's one thing, uh, another possibility, and this is what I did in my trading career, is fundamental analysis. Now, when we talk about fundamental analysis, this is where we look at the stock and we look at the EPS, the earnings per share. We look at the PE ratio. We look at, uh, at the e, um, yeah, EPS, I just talked about it, the dividend payments and all this kind of stuff. Um, in the beginning of my trading career, which was, okay, I can date myself here a little bit, more than 20 years ago, I followed William O'Neill and his canceling methodology. Who's familiar with canceling? Who has heard about this? 
And if you haven't heard about this, you're probably way too young. Anyhow, so it was a sort of a fundamental analysis. And you see, I found this really, really confusing. Uh, for me, I, I'm not that smart. For me, it was difficult to interpret all the numbers. They started dancing on the screen for me. So this is why at some point I decided for me personally, the best way is technical analysis. Now, again, every trader is different. What I'm presenting here today is what works for me. Might not work for you, but this is why you're here at this awesome event so that you hear a lot of input from different speakers, from different traders, so that you can decide what makes most sense for you. Because honestly, it all comes boils down to confidence. And how do you gain confidence? First of all, if you believe in what you're doing, right? And if you're second guessing yourself and wondering, did I do this right? You'll never pull the trigger. And you see, this is why for me, technical analysis is the best way to trade because it is black and white, right? I mean, either an indicator is above a certain value or it is not. And in a moment, we jump on the charts and I'll show you exactly how to do this. Now, when to enter, I'm also using indicators for this because the question is, once you have identified a stock or an option, and you say, okay, I know that I am bullish on this stock. The question is, should you enter now? Or should you wait until the end of the day? Or until tomorrow? Or should you have entered yesterday? And again, I'm going to show you how technical analysis helps me with that. So let's jump right on the charts. Does that sound good? So just wanna make sure that you can see my screen, that you can see my charts right now, that I, um, that, that you see Tesla right now. And again, if I'm just a, a small picture in the, in the top of Zoom here, uh, just double click on, uh, on my picture and then boom, it becomes big. Good, all right. So I wanna talk to you about the three indicators that I like to use and then I wanna show you exactly how I use this. Now, the question is, why three indicators? Well. For quite some time in the beginning of my trading career, I was looking for the holy grail. I was looking for the one indicator that does it all. And I realized that every indicator is flawed because here's the deal with indicators. Indicators are lagging. Did you notice this? I mean, I have tried to find predictive indicators, but I must say most indicators, I would say probably 90 to 95% of the indicators are lagging anyhow, which is okay as you will see. So um, this is why I decided to go with three indicators instead of just one indicator. So let me show you exactly the three indicators that I like to use. I'm gonna disappear from the screen for just a moment so that it is easier for me to show you the indicators in the lower, um, the lower chart window here. The first indicator that I like to use is the RSI. And uh, I wanna show you the exact settings here of the RSI. Um, so I'm using a setting of seven. That's, I'm looking back over the last seven days. Oh, by the way, um, before I forget, this was a quick typo. What I'm showing you is not a day trading strategy. Sorry about that. I'm showing you a strategy to swing trade stocks and options. So if that's your gig, uh, then you're in the right place. Uh, I like to swing trade stocks and options. And by, by swing trading, I mean that I like to hold it over five to 20 days. That is usually my horizon. Okay, let's come back right here on the charts. So the RSI, as you know, has been developed by Wells, uh, by Wells Wilder, right? And uh, it is the relative strength index. Supposedly, it is identifying overbought and oversold conditions. Now, here's how I like to use it. You see the line that I draw here, the RSI, by the way, is an oscillator going from zero to 100. Now I'm putting a line in there, which is the 50 line. So right dead smack in the middle. And what I found for my trading, whenever the RSI is above 50, a stock is more likely to go up. And whenever it is below 50, a stock is more likely to go down. And you see it here, I just brought up Tesla. We can look at many other stocks. Uh, we can look at stocks that you would like to look at no problem. You see Tesla here um, around April 6th, the RSI was about 50. So it was more likely for Tesla to go up from April 6th on. And sure enough, it did from 518 to almost 900, 880. Not a bad run at all, right? And you see also previously here, 
on uh, February 26th. This is when the RSI, which is the purple line here, uh, let me just see if I'm, if I'm covering it up. I do, let me disappear. Sorry about that, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so here we go on February, right here, 26, the RSI was dipping below uh, 50, which basically means that now the stock is more likely to go down. Morris asking RSI settings, please, dude, I just told you. <laughs> it's seven. The RSI only has one parameter and it is seven. So there you go, that's it. Okay, now <clears throat> having one indicator is good. And if having one indicator is good, what's better than one indicator? Two <laughs> indicators, right? So I wanna talk about the second indicator that I like to use. So the second indicator that I like to use is the stochastics. And for the stochastics, Boris and everybody else, here are the values, 14, three, and three. So stochastic developed by George Lane, also an oscillator, supposedly uh, to identify the overbought and oversold, uh, overbought and oversold situations. But the same here, the same here. Um, this is where I noticed for my trading, it works best if I'm looking at the 50 line. So whenever the stochastics is above 50, it is more likely for a stock to go up. Now, as you can see for Tesla here, it was as early as March 31st, right here. Stochastics already said Tesla is more likely to go up. Now, as you can see, RSI did not confirm this. RSI said, nah, we're still below 50, so not quite sure here, maybe, maybe not. But Stochastics said, oh, let's go. But this is why I like to use more than one indicator, because I want to make sure that we have a second indicator confirming what the other indicator tells me. Now, you get the idea, if two indicators are good, what's better than two indicators? Three indicators. So let's talk about the last indicator that I lose, uh, use here. So the last indicator that I use is the MACD. Uh, it is for 12, 26, and nine, standard parameters. Now, MACD developed by Gerald Apple, uh, basically a uh, moving average convergence divergence and here is how I personally like to use it. So I want to see if the MACD is below its signal line. So here my coloring, it is the, the purple line. If the purple line is below, here we go, the orange line, then it is more likely for the stock to go down. Let me just disappear for a moment that you see it right here, okay? And if, the purple line, the MACD, is above its moving average, it's more likely for the stock to go up. So this is how I like to use indicators. Now, here's the key question. How exactly do I determine the entry? But before we talk about this, let's talk about the next thing. If three indicators are good, what's better than three indicators? Four, five, six? Well, based on my experience, Three indicators is all I need. Because if I start plotting more and more indicators on the chart, that is when I'm getting confused. I don't know about you, in the beginning of my trading career, I probably plotted, I don't know, eight or 10 indicators on my chart. And, and I got confused. And this is where I, I suffered from analysis paralysis. Half of the indicators were saying, bye, and the other well, half were saying, sell. So I, mean, I don't know what was right and what was wrong. So this is why for me, the three indicators are perfect. Now, let me ask you this, uh, because I, I'm going fairly quickly here. Uh, you see me, I, I'm not all about fluff. If you want to hear my background story and blah, 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 you can go to rockwelltrading.com. But is this helpful thus far? Because if it is, do me a favor and just type a quick comment in the chat box here and, uh, and let me know if this helps you. Because my goal here this morning is that I give you practical information that you can use in your trading right away. And here's the deal. I'm not saying that you should always, always, always only trade this way. And if you don't use these three indicators, you will never make money. No, because that would be stupid of me, right? 
you see, there, there are so many great speakers here in this event, and all of them are great traders. All of them are making money, and everybody has a different approach. I just want to share here what works for me and hope that you find this helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, if you do, then I, I hope that you can use it in your trading. Okay, by the way, as you can see, I'm using TradingView here. So if you would like to know how exactly I set up TradingView, I have a video for you so that you don't have to fiddle around with this. Uh, we went through this rather quickly. If you just go to uh, YouTube and uh, you search for Marcus TradingView setup. See, that is the search term. Uh, hold on, need to share my screen. So you go to YouTube and uh, search for Marcus, M-A-R-K-U-S, with a K. Trading view setup, uh, this is where you see exactly what I explained in a little bit more detail. So that's where I'm going through this. But okay, so let's continue because you said that we are good to go. So here's what I'm looking for. <clears throat> what I'm looking for is the first day where all three indicators are true. So if I wanna buy a stock, I wanna see that the RSI is above 50 and the stochastics is above 50 and the MACD is above its moving average. And uh, when this happens, I like to uh, plot my bars in green here. So as you can see for Tesla, it was right here on April 6th. This is when Tesla indicated an uptrend. Now, very important here. I told you indicators are lagging. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you look at this, you saw, oh my gosh, I wish I would have bought Tesla right here at 350. Yeah, well, dude, I wish I would have bought it here. But at this point, it was more likely for Tesla to go down. So the key is, what I found in, in my trading career, I am not able to pick bottoms and I'm not able to pick tops. I mean, if you can do this, good for you. You're probably way smarter than I am. I'm, I'm not that smart. So I realized all I need is a, is a short move. And I mean, not even a short move here, as you can see going from 510 to almost 880. That is what, like uh, 30 or 40% in a matter of days. So this strategy is a so-called trend following strategy, and uh, it is there to identify trends. Now, as you can see here, this, by the way, was the first day where all three indicators were below 50 or the MACD was below its moving average. So this is where at 728, you see, oh, it was more likely for Tesla to go down. It did the next day, then it jumped back up, but you see, it remained. All three indicators kept telling me that we are looking for bearish uh, market conditions. And sure enough, Tesla went all the way down. Let me see the chart here. Yeah, yeah. Not a big deal. Uh, went all the way down from what? 732 to 350, a down move of almost 50%. So here's the cool thing. You can apply this to any stock. What stock do you want to look at? Apple? You want to look at Apple and see how Apple is doing right now? So Apple, right now, as you can see, it is more likely for Apple to go up. See, the first time we got uh, the green bars where all three indicators told me, okay, good, we are good to go, was at 263. And from there, Apple went up, uh, what, $40? Up to here to almost 300? Short move, but right now it is more likely for Apple to go up. Now, when I say more likely, right? I mean, nobody, based on my experience, nobody knows what the market is doing. As traders, what we like to do is uh, play the odds. I mean, that's all we can do. We look at probabilities and we're playing the odds because losses are part of our, uh, of our life as traders. And we will talk about losses here in just a moment because I want to show you exactly how I limit my losses and then also when to take profits. Because right now, we only talked about when to enter. And here's the deal. You, you, you might have heard it. A monkey can enter the market. Money is made and lost when you exit the market. Therefore, it is super important that you know where do you place your exits. Is this making sense? Okay. So um, again, we can look at, uh, at, at a bunch of different, so Netflix, for example, right? I mean, you can use this to apply to any chart and you see Netflix, that's another great example. Um, I, I'm doing a daily coffee with Marcus Live. Um, here we jump on Netflix here. 
so I'm doing a daily coffee with Marcus live. So in the afternoon, I'm on YouTube live. You can go to my channel at 3.30 Eastern time. Uh, it's 30 minutes before the markets close. So this is where um, there's like here, hundreds of people on there just asking some questions. And uh, one person asked a question uh, right here. It was on April 16th. Is Netflix a good buy? And not a good buy buy, a good buy, a good stock to buy. So this is why I say, no, this move has already happened. See, this is where here on March 26th, this is when all three indicators told me that it is more likely for Netflix to go up. Now you might say, well, why didn't they caught it right here at 292 or 300? Well, because all indicators are lagging. But if you can get in at 362 and ride it all the way up to 440, you're talking about a 15 to 20% move. That is not bad at all. Would you agree? Well, would you be happy if you could catch a, a 15 to 20% move? Because here's the deal. When you can do this with a stock, when you get an idea where the stock is more likely to go over the next few days, right? then you can also trade options. It doesn't matter whether you're just outright buying calls or buying puts or you're selling calls or selling puts or trading spreads. It doesn't really matter, right? Because what do you need to know before you can apply any option strategy? Well, before you can apply any option strategy, you need to know what is the underlying stock more likely to do? Is it more likely to go up? Is it more likely to go down? Or is it more likely to stay sideways? And this is where I feel that these three indicators are helping me dramatically. This makes sense? Okay. Good. So um, let's, uh, let's actually jump back to here. Now that we talked about the entry, let's actually for a moment talk about exits because exits are an important part in our lives of our trader. So here's the deal, when to exit. I have a golden rule. And as a golden rule, I recommend that you never risk more than 2% of your account on any given trade. Because one of the mistakes that I did in the beginning, I, I traded way too big of a size. Has, has this ever happened to you that you traded too big, that, that you risked half of your account on a trade and then it went against you? You see, when losses are freaking you out, it's usually that you traded too big of a size. And for profits, my golden rule is one to two. So if I'm risking $1,000 on a trade, I want to make at least $2,000 on a trade. Or if you risk $100 of a trade, you want to make at least $200 on a trade. Now, why is that important? Here's the cool thing. When you apply that golden rule, you can make money even if you're wrong half of the time. Did you know this? It's really amazing. When you apply the golden rule that you risk less than you're trying to make. So if you risk $100 trying to make $200, you can be wrong half of the time and still make money. Let me show you. So here is simple math, over 10 trades. Money is math. The good news is it's simple math. So let's say that you're risking $200 per trade. Now you already know this. If you're risking $200 per trade, how much are you trying to make on this trade? $400, right? So let's say over five losses, you have five losing trades and you lose five times $200 every single time. So you lose $1,000. Now on your winning trades, you have another five winning trades and the five winning trades generate $400 in profits for you. So this means that five times 400 is $2,000. If you're losing $1,000 and you're making $2,000, do you still make money? Yes. <laughs> right? Hold on, I need a sip of coffee. Okay. So that is the beautiful thing. You gotta limit your losses. Now going back to the strategy that I've just shown you, the PowerX strategy, as you can see, once we identify right here that we're good for takeoff, you can apply a really small stop loss and you can see that here, the profits take care of themselves, that you can actually place a small stop loss. Same here, let me just disappear for a moment. When you're playing it to the downside, you can apply a small stop loss and catch the momentum. So that is the beautiful thing about this. 
and just get used to it. The losses are part of your business. You see, if you have a strategy where you can afford that every other trade is wrong, I mean, come on, <laughs> isn't that beautiful? Doesn't this take a lot of pressure off you than having a strategy where you have to be right most of the time to make money? Okay, anyhow, so I hope that, uh, that this helps. Uh, let's see what else I got for you. So I, I wanna also spend some time here to, to answer your questions, that is the deal. And uh, I, I could probably draw this out a little bit more, but I thought it would be fun to maybe even watch the open together, see what the markets are doing here this morning since they're opening in three minutes. So there's, uh, <laughs> there's several things that we can do here over the next few minutes. But let me just uh, quickly go back to the presentation. Here's the deal. So you don't, <laughs> with me, I love being on charts. I love this interaction. This is why I said I like to do this, this YouTube lives. Uh, because I, I find this this more fun than running through 200 slides. I don't know about you. And, and honestly, so confession time, I, I did that. Um, in, in the beginning, uh, when people ask me, so, so what do you do? I prepared fancy presentations. And oh, they were singing and dancing and they were beautiful. I mean, Steve Jobs got nothing on me. Just kidding. Of course, he, <laughs> anyhow. So, but this were... Um, I just realized, hey, you know what, if I give you a few bullet points here, uh, you, you can then use that hopefully in your trading. So here's what I got for you and then we take a look at the questions here. Uh, I have the book, The Power X Strategy. You see it here right behind me. Uh, so this is the book that I've written and this is explaining this, what I've just explained to you in what, 30 minutes in more detail. It's not super thick, it's a uh, what is it, 160 pages? You can easily read it, probably a couple of hours. Um, it's a nice hardcover, you can get on Amazon, you can get it for $24.99, or if you want, I'll be happy to ship this book to you uh, for free. All I ask is that you cover shipping and handling, which is $4.95. So you see that there's a link somewhere here, rockwelltrading.com slash book. Uh, if you would like to have a copy of the book and uh, you would like to read it, there's tons and tons and tons of charts in there. It's really hard to, to show right now, but uh, that's basically what I got for you so that you know. Ooh, <laughs> here it is. Now, um, in the book, you will see that I actually did program a software to make my life super easy. So this software will automatically, every day, find the stocks according to the strategy and then tells me exactly where to place my stop loss and it tells me exactly where my profit target is, or should be, and it tells me exactly how much size I should trade. Because you see, after you identify the trade, after you know when to enter, this is blinding, there we go. The most important question now is, okay, how many shares should you trade, or how many options contracts? And uh, that's what this is all about. All right, so let's see, there is uh, a bunch of questions, and uh, I wanna say, let's see. So. Um, Dick VJ is asking, can we use this strategy for cryptocurrencies? Here's the deal, let's go jump back on the charts. So I personally do not trade cryptocurrencies, but let's take a look at Bitcoin. So, and I mean, again, I'm not that familiar with cryptocurrencies. I personally prefer trading stocks and options. But as you can see here, uh, so this strategy has identified that Bitcoin is a buy at 7,137. And right now it's trading, what, at 9,488? So. I do believe that you can use it on other instruments. Now, not every stock is suitable for this. There are stocks that, that are better suitable, and this is why I, I had this, this software program for me. It's called the PowerX Optimizer. And uh, this software basically looks for the best stocks for a strategy. Because, uh, you see, every stock is different. So here, is this best for cryptocurrencies? I don't know. I mean, this is why I'm sharing with you all the details so that you can... Uh, Check it out and see if this works. Okay, so uh, PRF says, uh, I add a high Kanashi candles in trading view to verify the trend. Perfect combo with your strategy. You know what, that's great. And so here's the deal. High Kanashi, candlesticks. I believe this is great concept. You, you might be wondering why I'm not using candlesticks. To me personally, candlesticks are confusing. Now. I know that they work. I know many successful traders are using them. For me, a simple bar is enough. So 
I know most of the candlestick formations. I, you, you remember there were these uh, these desk desk mats, right? Where they had all the candlestick formations. I cannot see them in real time while they are forming. So if you can do this, good for you. I mean, uh, absolutely. That, that's the other thing. Feel free to to take these concepts here. I mean, this is what all this uh, is all about, right? You take the concepts and then you apply your own experiences. And this is where you come up with the secret sauce. Okay. So, um, okay, uh, Julie is asking, do you consider the ATR and do you calculate for the exit price? That is a great question. I personally like to use the ADR, the average daily range. And uh, here is what I usually like to do. I like to place my stop loss. Um, let me just go back here. I, I don't really don't like Bitcoin. It's, um, let's actually take a look at, uh, let's see what Apple is doing this morning, just out of curiosity. Markets just opened and Apple is up 1.4%. So is the overall market, 1.2%, 1.4%. Yeah, okay, not too bad at all. Okay, so, um, <laughs> but I digress. So I like to use the ADR, the average daily range, and I like to place my stop loss at one times the ADR, and then my profit target at two times the ADR. So as you can see, I'm in and out quickly, but uh, that's okay, right? I mean, for me, it's okay if I capture these small trends, I do not need to be in a position where I'm making 200% on this position. No. See, if I can make 5% in a matter of days, and then another 5%, and another 5%, it all adds up. See, I, I rather take small bites out of the market because I feel that especially these days where markets can turn around on a dime, I feel that this is where a nimble strategy where you get in and out quickly can help you because uh, trends, are short these days, as you know. All right, so uh, Gary's asking, can the PowerX strategy be used for Forex? Um, I don't see why not. Uh, let's take a look at the, at the euro versus the dollar. Uh, euro versus the dollar, here we go. I personally do not trade Forex, and uh, you see, it is, it is choppier. I mean, I'm probably using a bad example because recently, uh, the euro versus the dollar have been trading in a really, really tight range. Uh, I mean, Gary is asking, Gary, um, what currency pair do you usually look at? What currency pair do you like best? Uh, just let me know and we can take a look at it together. Okay, uh, Georgios is asking, is this also available as an ebook? Um, yes, it is. And uh, if you want to have a, a Kindle ebook, uh, go to amazon.com. So if you go on amazon.com, look for PowerX Strategy, the Kindle edition, uh, George, is $4.99. So again, for $4.95, I'll be happy to ship you the physical book. And if you like to have the Kindle, you can just go to Amazon. It's there for $4.99. But you also see the hardcover is usually, what is it here, uh, $19.86. And uh, if you go to rockwelltrading.com slash book, that's where you get it. Okay, so um, Gary says, um, GDP yen. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> let's see. British pound, uh, Japanese yen. Sorry. Again, I'm not a currency trader at all. So, uh, well, as you can see, I'm disappearing here for a moment. It would have caught this longer downtrend. Here, it was basically a sideways move. And right now, right now, according to the indicators, it is more likely to go down. But you see, co compare this to the stocks that I've shown you. This is why I prefer trading stocks and options. This makes sense? Okay. Good. Um, so Frank is asking, how do you get the black bars? Um, see, for a more in-depth video here, just go to Marcus Trading View Setup. And this is where you also get to my channel. Uh, so Marcus Heidkotter, I know the name is difficult. And when you subscribe to the channel, you get notifications from YouTube whenever I release a new video or um, when, I, when I go live, which I do this afternoon again. So this afternoon, I'll take a look at, uh, at my positions that I currently have. I'll probably take some profits today. So uh, there's a lot of trading often going on and I'm sharing more cool stuff. At least I think it's cool. <laughs> I'll let you be this judge whether it's cool or not. Okay. Georgius is asking, does it work intraday? I don't know. 
check it out. I mean, I personally like to use it on a daily chart. Um, does it work intraday? It might or might not. So somebody asked earlier, bring up the Dow Jones. Here we go. There's the Dow. So we're up right now uh, 1%. As you can see, we have strong resistance at 24,250 and support at 22,550. And we have been trapped in this since uh, April 7th. So right now, for a full month, we have been trapped here. Let's see if this is, uh, if this is actually breaking out at some point. And you see right now we have black bars, so it's more likely for the Dow to go sideways here. Good. Um, Okay, uh, when you have all three indicators lined up, SMC is asking this, SMC clock. Okay, when you, have all, <laughs> when you have all three indicators lined up, I could imagine several stocks would meet this criteria. How would you pare the list down to select the best stocks with the best probability of success if you could only buy one or two stocks? Excellent question. Okay, so the question is here, out of all the stocks, we have what, eight or 9,000 stocks only in the United States. And if you take the stocks worldwide, we probably are 30,000 stocks. So how do you find the ones to trade? Well, this is why, for me personally, in order to do this, I had a programming team program this software for me, the call the PowerX Optimizer. And so here is how I personally pare it down. Uh, so I'm running a scanner uh, where I say, you know what, I want to see all the stocks, and you see this is the scanner running in the background, that actually have a buy or sell signal today. And here we go, we have, for example, uh, AINV, that has a buy signal today. See right now, there's a green bar, I can zoom in a little bit. And this says, okay, right now, it's more likely for this stock to go up. Now here's one important thing for me, this would be a simple scanner, right? I mean, you can program this with, with other software packages, but here is what I wanted to know. I wanted to know if I had traded this stock, AINV, Apollo Investment Corporation, if I had traded it according to the rules that you now know over the past year, what would the performance have been? And you see, this is what my software spits out for me here. So on a $10,000 account, I'm normalizing it on $10,000 account, if I had traded this strategy that you now know, I would have made $9,157. So this means I would have gotten a 91.6% RI over the past year. There were nine winning trades, 13 losing trades. Oh my gosh, there's more losses than win. And yet you're making $9,157. The profit factor is 5.48. Uh, the average win is $1,200, the average loss, is $157. On average, I was eight, um, eight days in a trade and the longest, <coughs> excuse me, the longest I was ever in the trade was 24 days. So you see, for me personally, um, SMC clock, this gives me now the confidence to say, you know what? This actually was a good stock for the PowerX strategy and I, I might decide to trade this one. Or I look at a few others. As you can see, there's not too many that meet to trade this criteria. And if you're only, if you're trading in a retirement account and you only want to buy, you look at a few buys and where you see, oh my gosh, cars, look at that. Over the past year, if I would have traded cars, according to the rules of the PowerX strategy uh, that you now know, or you can get it in the book, I would have made on a $10,000 account, $40,000. So which do you prefer? And here we had, 10 winning trades, nine losing trades. So here we had a higher winning percentage. So I, I believe uh, that it might be easier for you to see, oh, I rather trade cars, whereas AI and V. Let's look at another buy, MTCH, match.group. So here, uh, very similar like the first one, AI and V, $8,244 over the past year with 16 trades, 10 winning trades, six losing trades. And you see you have all the important information here. Anyhow, does this help, SMC Clock? Does this answer your question of how you can go about this? So the, the software is making my life easier. I'm not saying that you, that you must have the software and you can never, ever trade it. I mean, I, I gave you all the rules, and honestly, all the rules are in this book. I mean, this is not a, a black box system. You see, for me, in, in, the, in my past, I did trade black box systems. 
And I never had confidence because I bought it from somebody and they said, oh, here's uh, my, my magic system and there's the software and uh, it's, it's magically speaking out, spitting out buys and sells. And I got a buy signal and I looked at it and I said, really? Why is this a buy signal? It doesn't look like a buy signal to me. You see, when I don't understand what's behind it, it's hard for me to pull the trigger. And this is why, uh, for, for me, I believe, in order for you to trade this strategy, or maybe at some point invest in the software and, uh, and follow the software, you need to know what is behind there. Making sense? Okay. Just want to make sure that I'm capturing here uh, most of the questions. Good. So Mary Ellen is asking, um, on the MACD, is it sufficient for the fast line to be uh, over the slow or must it be both over the histogram? No, uh, it, is, it is just sufficient if they, yeah, the slow line. Okay, the slow line is the MACD. Um, no, the slow line is the moving average of the MACD, sorry. And the faster one is the MACD, right? So you want the MACD be above its moving average or below its moving average. Again, for more detail, Check out the book, rockwelltrading.com slash book. It's only $4.95, right? And uh, you, you'll have everything written down. Be, I don't know about you. I, I like stuff written down when I can read it and highlight it. Yeah, so that's me. You might be different. Okay. Uh, George is asking, uh, can I send the book to Greece? I'll be happy to. It, it takes a month, though. So, George, as for you, it would be easier to get the Kindle from Amazon and... Uh, if you go to rockwelltrading.com slash Kindle, it'll redirect you to Amazon in Europe somewhere where you can easily get it, okay? So it might be easier for you because of customs and all this, it takes a month if you are ordering it and you're internationally. Okay, so Gary's asking, uh, do you always trade daily charts? I personally, yes, um, and here's why. I am kind of lazy. You will see, when you trade the strategy, you can trade it in only 15 minutes a day. I don't know about you, but I don't want to look at charts all day long. So this is why I like to do it in the morning, right now in the open. So after we are done here, I'll, I'll check my positions. I'll probably put a trade on one or two. Let's see what's happening here today. And uh, that's it. Then I go about my day. I mean, I'm not obsessing over charts. So this is why I personally like daily charts. Okay, so Skip is asking, do the results you just referenced include options? Uh, yeah, so here's the deal. For example, for match.com, if you say, well, I don't wanna buy the stock, I want to do options. I have an options tab here uh, that basically shows you what is the best option for this strategy. Now, I don't wanna go into too much detail, but I personally uh, like to trade either at the money option or in the money option. And you see for match.com, uh, I'll make it this a, a little bit bigger and I'm moving out of the way here for a moment. There we go. You see, um, you need to have enough days to expiration. So this is where I recommend uh, trading the 619 expiration, gives you 45 days until expiration. So you could either uh, trade the, the uh, 8250 call or the 90 call. And then I'm doing some calculations. What is the entry price right now? Uh, what is the option at target? What when you hit the stop loss so that you see the reward and risk ratio? Anyhow, don't want to dive too deep in because here's one of the deals. This is what I noticed. I mean, you're getting a lot of information here over, over these three days. And it's awesome information. It is so important that you don't get overwhelmed, right? So uh, if you would like to know more, I'll, I'll be happy to walk you through the software not right now because we have another uh, probably 15 minutes or something like this, right? So I would like to take my time. So if you want, um, just, just contact us, rockwelltrading.com. There's probably somewhere to contact us and I'll be happy to, to give you a more detailed walkthrough if this is something that you're interested in, right? But I, I didn't come here today, please understand. I didn't come here today to say, oh my gosh, you, you all need to buy my software. No, I want to show what works for me and hopefully this is helpful and I want to give you this, this book for free because uh, I, I believe it's, it's really good. I'm biased. I've written it, but I think it's an awesome book. I, I wish that I had a book like this. Okay. So um, Mary's asking, the book is in the mail or when will we get around to sending it? Uh, we have a fulfillment center and usually, usually they send it the day after we receive the order. So if you're ordering it today, they should ship it out tomorrow, 
Okay. So, and then it takes what five or, or seven days uh, for you to arrive. So we are sending it media mail um, because this way I can afford to send it to you. Otherwise it would cost an arm and a leg. You give an, get an idea. Okay. So um, Nick is asking what Delta do you use for the options and what strategies I'm using the exact same strategy here that I have been explaining today, the power X strategy and the deltas that I like to use is either a 0 0.5 or a 0 0.7. But again, Trading about options would probably be a little bit too long right now. So that's why I want to stay focused on, on trading stocks. Um, Pierre says cryptocurrencies are super easy to trade in Robinhood. Okay. Uh, sorry, dude. I mean, it's personal preference. For me, you just mentioned two things that I don't like at all. I don't like Robinhood because I think that they have trouble. You know that they had had back press. Uh, you, you know that on the busiest days, their service went down. So not a big fan of them. And cryptocurrencies, also not the biggest fan. I believe that there's other ways to make money. And I, for me personally, trading stocks and options, it's so much easier uh, than fiddling around with cryptocurrencies. But hey, I'm just sharing what works for me. Uh, <laughs> you take from this presentation what's helpful for you and uh, everything else you discard or move on to the next speaker. No big deal, right? Good. All right, uh, let's see if you have a few other questions. Um, Raleigh and Jeanette, how much time do I have? I can't remember. I knew that there was something about the 45 minute mark where I'm right now. I know that somebody said, okay, at 45 minutes, you know, you're supposed to do something. Really? No, you're doing just great, Marcus. You have the you have all the way to the top of the hour to do what you want. And okay. If you've got some giveaways, just let me know, and I'll be glad to go. Oh, ahead sure, absolutely. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's actually uh, give away a few more mugs. Let's give away. Three more of the mug. Let me ask you guys, do you like the mugs? Trade what you see, not what you think. For me, it is a super, super good reminder. By the way, we have them as right-handed and left-handed. So yes, if you're left-handed, <laughs> it shows it right here. So we have them. Uh, I'll be happy to, to ship you a mug like this. Trade what you see, not what you think. For me, it's a super important reminder. Raleigh, let's give away uh, three more mugs. Uh, you have the, the randomizer here. Let's do this while I sip a, on a coffee. You want to quickly do this or you want to just uh, announce it in a moment? Uh, uh, let's see. Let's do this right now. Um, I just ran it, Marcus, and the first guy is Sergio Tampere, T-A-M-P-E-R-E. -E. So, Sergio, if you're in the room, and you should be because I picked you out of the room, just type <laughs> in your email address so that we know how to follow up with you. Yeah. So, uh, send us your email address and then we'll probably follow up and ask you for your shipping address and uh, we'll ship the muck to you. Um, please be in the US, otherwise shipping is so expensive. <laughs> but hey, uh, no discrimination here. I mean, randomizer is randomizer, so. Okay, here's another, you want another one? Yeah. Boom, Octavio. 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 You are the winner of a great mug. Good. All right. And Fantastic. I just need your email address and you let me know when you want to do another one. Okay, so um, let me see. Did I did I miss any questions here? Uh, Julie is asking, uh, can you give the time and day for your live sessions on YouTube? Just look for my name. I know it's a weird name, Marcus Heidkotter, uh, and it's every day at 3.30 uh, Eastern time, 30 minutes before the close, and I mean, obviously, only weekdays. So I'm doing it this afternoon, 3.30 Eastern time. No, I'm not doing it this afternoon because you guys are still going. I don't want to I, they're, they're great presenters here. Stay here. Stay here. Don't, don't watch me. Watch me another day. Um, just uh, because you have a great lineup today, right, Raleigh? I mean, I've seen the lineup. Very impressed. Really, it's good. Yeah, we have a fantastic lineup. But, you know, it all begins, you know, you're first up. You're first okay. in the bat. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Estefan is asking, what is the PowerX Strategy Companion Guide? Great question. Because when you order the book, I say, Do, would you like to have the Companion Guide? Let me quickly explain what that is. Here's one of the challenges. In the book, in the book, um, we cannot have the charts in color. So in the book, the charts are in black and white, right? I mean, this is just a limitation of the printer. So the companion guide, this is where it's all in color. It's, uh, I believe, it's like 24 pages. So every single chart that you see here is uh, in letter size. So it's huge and big. Um, and uh, this is where the color charts are in there so that you can mark up there. I don't think that you need it. If you want it, uh, we ship it together with you with the book. So when you order the book and uh, it says, hey, would you like to have the companion guide? 
I don't have one handy right now and I don't want to obviously right now disappear and look for it. So it's a letter size, really big. It's in all colors so that you see the charts in color uh, because for, for some it might be helpful. So it might be helpful for you. Okay. So did the books get uh, given away already? Just arrived. Uh, you know what? Uh, that's what I... Hey, great that you just arrived. You are in for a treat because uh, the next speaker is Guy Cohen. I know Guy, uh, we go back a long time. You're gonna love it, what he has to say. And yes, the book is still available. I'll be happy to ship it to you for free, uh, to give it to you for free. And I ask that you cover shipping and handling, which is $4.95. So that's it. Go to rockwelltrading.com slash book. Here's the link. <laughs> Not easy to point at it. And uh, this is where I'll be happy to ship it to you. And I just ask that you cover the $4.95 uh, cents in shipping. Okay. Uh, so Armanda is asking, uh, I am in Canada. Get I, can I get a link for the Kindle? Yes, go to rockwelltrading.com slash Kindle. rockwelltrading.com slash Kindle. This will automatically notice that you are in Canada and will redirect you to amazon.ca. It's really super smart. I don't know how my team does it. They're just geniuses. Um, so if you do this and if you're in the UK, for example, and you go to rockwelltrading.com slash Kindle, it redirects you to amazon.co.uk. Mind blown. Okay. Hey, we were talking about trading. Why are we talking about Amazon here? Uh, you know what? Let's take a look at Amazon. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we take a look at Amazon and see if Amazon right now is a good buy? So what do you see? Very similar to Netflix. It was at 1,913 and then it went all the way up to 2,400. See, this is the power of indicators here. This is the power of where you see, all right, great. Right now, it is more likely to go sideways. So this is why at this point, I would say, nah, you know what? Let's just, uh, just stay away from this and wait until we get a clear cut signal again. Okay. <clears throat> So um, Joseph's asking, how can I get more information about the software? Um, just go to rockwelltrading.com. It's my website and uh, you'll see in the menu, there's uh, some more information about the software. Uh, you, you can request a free demo if you want to, or you can just see it on the website, what it does. But hey, that's not the point. That's not why I'm here today. Um, I know that I'm coming up towards the end of my time. Uh, Raleigh and team, Raleigh, Jeanette, Westmark. I mean, you guys have done an amazing job organizing it. I mean, you lined up 24 or what, 26 speakers? Amazing, over three days coordinating all this. I mean, tremendous job. I mean, kudos to you. I'm so happy to be part of this. I, I hope that you guys found this helpful, the uh, hour that we spent together here. And I, I wanna leave room that it can introduce the next speaker. And I'm really very thankful, uh, very thankful for you guys who spent the time here with me. You got up early. I mean, depending on where you are, that's probably why we have a lot of international people on here right now. It's a bit easier for you than Californians because for California, it's what, seven o'clock in the morning right now. I mean, if, if you are from California, if you are on the West Coast and you were listening to this, thank you so much. I wouldn't have listened to myself at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Anyhow. <okay. laughs> Marcus, thank you so much. It was a tremendous presentation. And I'll tell you what's made it easy for, easy for Jeanette and me putting this together. We're dealing with pros like yourself. Everybody that's come here is so committed, so professional. It's not like herding cats at all. So it's a pleasure to work with you all. You've been fantastic. There's one more giveaway. I'm getting pinged here. Marcus said he was going to give away three mugs. Are you hey, ready? Okay, yeah. You ready to give one more away? Absolutely. Go ahead. I'm going to hit the random generator. It's spinning around. Come over here. Okay. Jimmy Higgins. Jimmy Higgins. If you're in the room there, you have just won another mug. Type in your email address. We'll follow up, get shipping information, and Marcus will be glad to send you his mug. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm going to disappear right now. I'm going to trade a little bit. And uh, I'm also going to listen in the background to Guy because I really love what Guy has to say. I 